Welcome back. Now, as Kenyans mark Labor Day, we asked the question, just how easy is it to get a job, particularly for the millions of Kenyans under the age of 35? Noah Kipkemboi tells us more. The latest data from the Kenya National Bureau of Statistics on unemployment revealed that between October and December 2022, the rate of unemployment reduced to 4.9%, reflecting a drop from 1.05 million to 960,000 unemployed Kenyans. The government says it is intervening to further lower these numbers. We also um, have interventions in the areas that support creation of jobs, one of the spaces that we are looking at is our housing program, our manufacturing uh, agenda. Whereas this can be marked as a small win, with the unemployment rate dropping from a high of 10.4% in 2020, majority of Kenyans are not happy with the state of Kenya's labor market. Now, starting with the youth, 80% of the Kenyan population is below the age of 35. Between ages 20 and 24, the unemployment rate is at 48%. Now, we can argue that majority of them are still in school. But what awaits them once they leave school? Now that you've been educated, you've gone to college, and now you cannot get a job with the degree you have, with the diploma you have, you have to find an option. At the end of the day, you have to go find something to do. Go to Mujengo or maybe... Uh, Start something in the market. Ken Omondi is currently looking for a job. It's an unhealthy job market. Uh, okay, it's so because uh, the government uh, hasn't worked on the private sector. On the private sector, because I understand that the government jobs are about close to 100,000. And so the millions of jobs they need, they ought to create it from the private sector. He tells me that for him, a lack of education has relegated him to a state of being unemployed. I didn't uh, get to learn well, which I think affected my greater majority. But now at least uh, from Kibaki era, the introduction of free primary education, I think those people who gained from it went on well. And probably if uh, education could just be made free, yeah, it should be something that is free for all. David Joseph Omohoya, on the other hand, is retired and not impressed at all with the state of the job market currently. Before the government used to advocate for educating our kids. We have educated kids, but they don't have jobs. Why? Who is failing? Do we still have the labor ministry that used to take care of these people? So we, don't, we no longer actually find that to be necessary. To be proud of something known as a labor ministry or even unionists. A good number of unionists these days they just work for themselves. He reminisces on how vibrant the labor market was during late President Jomo Kenyatta's tenure. And my first place to work was the hotel industries. I joined in Vega Country Club in 1971. My salary was 380 but then. But you say the man was with a very great value. They used to give me a house, they could give me a uniform, they could feed me. So I felt that I was, I was very much okay. Yeah? Came Moy, we felt at least there is a government. But after Moy, we don't know if they have government which cares about Kenyans who are job seekers or not. In contrast with those good old days, young people like Festus Mwangangi, who started medical health records, have been pushed into hawking as a form of self-employment, as jobs in his line of specialization remain hard to come by. We have a challenge. We to get to So, is there hope for a revamped and reformed labor sector? Look at the factories, look at the companies, look at the parastatals, which used to employ people. They are moving from this country, running away from this country, or just totally closing, and never to hear where they are. Who is going to, to change, and what change can one do when those kind of institutions are not there? It is going to take our country some number of years, and the adjustment to go back to where we were, 
as far as labor issue is concerned. But even with the ever-growing population and reduced job opportunities, there are solutions to solve this challenge. Kama wajiri, wangekua at least, uh, awataki kuchua kitu kidoko. Kwa mtu mwenye at least, anatafuta kazi, ingekua at least, a better. How will I fight for you to get a job like that one of a yala? When, when my Mwishimiwa uh, Raila Odinga wants the daughter to go, Kalonso wants the son to go, yeah? Why would you pass to get a job? So these small people, we should learn how to forget what we went to school for and do anything. When I lost my job in 1986, I swore never to be employed again because there was no company that could have employed me and paid me the much the country general was paying me. I decided going to Juakali. Well, I'm happy from the Juakali business, hustling up and down, up and down. I've educated my 10 kids. Some of them are graduates, despite the fact they don't have jobs now, but they're graduates, I'm happy. And I'm proud of that. So our sons and daughters, you should not cry, you should not cry for employment. Be creative. Do anything you can. Beside what you went to school for, do anything you can to earn a living. Africa's current population is 1.4 billion, and it's projected to hit 2.5 billion by the year 2050, which means more pressure on the labor market. Will proper policy framework and opportunity creation give a soft landing for the billions of youth in need of work? Now keep going. KTN News, Nairobi.